Egypt has many sacred lands. Most men are not conditioned to conquer them. They may believe they are, but they lack the skill, the foresight, the respect. that understand our lands can rule over them. Good morning, everyone. The sun is shining, the pharaoh is dead, and we are getting out of... <gasps> the pharaoh is dead. How dramatic. Well, we all know what happens when you have an empty throne. Civil War. And the question on everyone's lips is who will be Pharaoh next? No checking the history books, we're in control of history now. We're showing you an early alpha build of the game, so please forgive any upside down pyramids or other visual oddities. Our journey started in Upper Egypt, which is actually south of Lower Egypt. Figure that one out. Uh, we took advantage of our close relationship with Seti and set up some early barter agreements. 500 food for 110 wood put us in a healthy position to grow our army. And grow we did taking out and settling the provinces of Yebu through Hetem and Mez and Kirka Oasis. We didn't just take these lands on a random whim though, oh no. Their production of food and stone respectively was important for us to secure our large armies. But now that the Pharaoh is out of the picture, they benefit us in more ways than one. Let's head into the Pharaoh's crown window to get a rundown of the situation and officially join the war. We have 15 turns until the next pharaoh is decided, which will increase as new factions join the war. The basis of that decision lies in how much legitimacy the contender has. As you can see, we currently have 43 legitimacy. One of our largest sources of that comes from how much sacred Egyptian land we own. When I said we didn't take this land on a random whim, here's the main reason we took it. Expanding out into the desert has gained us enough legitimacy to land us in third place for the crown. Our closest rivals include Amon Mez and Menepta's remaining faction. I'm not above spoiling the race with a little blade to the ankle, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna kill off my competitors if that wasn't clear. Once we take the lead for legitimacy, we'll claim our place as Pharaoh, and using that power, take Menefer, our rightful land to rule from, also known as Memphis. So, on turn 22, we were just attacked by one of the last remaining armies of Kirka. They thought they could take back Kirka Oasis, but Talsrite was close enough by to interrupt their siege. Now, I love Kirka Oasis. It's my favorite Oasis, but I'd rather not have to keep bringing Talsrat back over to defend it. So before we leave, I'm gonna stop by the settlement's garrison camp. By swapping in some of our units, we can have a backup army with reduced upkeep lying in wait nearby, just in case the settlement needs it. We have a couple of these camps dotted around our most vulnerable settlements, with units positioned to lend a helping hand if needed. We'll then recruit some more units to keep Talsrat's army strong. We've got a nice balance going of ranged and melee to back up our chariots. Probably best to upgrade some of our food producing buildings as well to feed the new men. As a leader who has declared themselves a pretender for the throne, we have access to a selection of crowns, each with bonuses to our faction. The Nemez crown offers us minus 10% replenishment, but plus 10 production of all resources, which we are in need of at the moment. Among Talsrat's ancillaries, we can equip our new crown. Looking snazzy, Talsrat. No matter how fun sliding down a sand dune is, transversing directly across the desert plains is never an easy feat. So for now, we'll stick to the roads. This road leads directly to our next target. Excellent. Let's take the army out they've garrisoned at their outpost to make sieging the main settlement an easier task. Dungal Oasis does not lie on sacred Egyptian lands. However, it's a settlement that specializes in food resources, something we're fighting to keep in supply, literally fighting. Our soldiers will need to construct siege ladders before the attack, as well as a ram to get through the gate. While preparation is made, we'll take our Sakan army garrisoned over in Nekhem and begin work raiding the lands of Abdu. Abdu are another competitor for the crown, so naturally we're at war. Not only that, 
but they stand between us and Minifer. Oh, and if you've noticed the world has turned a little gloomy, it's because we've entered into a state of crisis. Don't look at me, I've been looking after our lands. I don't know what's going on over in Canaan. Well, let's hope that the gods are with us today. And if we head into the local deities panel, we can see their friendly faces. Before we continue in our campaign, we really should show them a little bit of attention, in the hopes that they'll bless us with some of their good fortune. Don't just pick your god and who looks the coolest though, we all know we'd pick Anubis. Instead take a look at what bonuses they can offer you. Each god offers three tiers of worship, which we can build up through building shrines, praying to them, and devoting generals to their name. We're currently worshiping Isis, but Osiris offers 10% replenishment from prayer, a useful bonus post-battle. Plus, if we take Abdu's capital, we'll have the cult center for Osiris. Taking that would seriously increase our favor. Whether it's divine intervention or placebo of belief, doesn't matter, works for me. Our siege equipment is ready, so let's head into battle. At the beginning of battle, we're shown the current and predicted weather conditions. Talseret is not one to fly into battle without a bit of thought and consideration. Sweltering heat will just tire our men out before they can even reach the walls. We'll wait out this weather for something a little more tactical to us. The sandstorm will once again help us here as we approach the walls, by reducing the enemy archers and towers accuracy. We've positioned our siege ladders to the south, and our ram is on its own in the west, convincing our enemy to only hold a small defense at the gate. However, our chariots, with their speed, will head around, taking them off guard and following through the gate as soon as it's broken down, capturing the vital points of the city, while the rest of our army fights at the walls. in the campaign, we've specced into decrees focusing on resources so far. However, I plan on recruiting some more chariot units, so let's steer our research in that direction. Tausra has some unique chariots to aid her in battle, and I want to utilize them, especially the elite javelin chariots with their higher armor. We've begun the building chain for the units we want, so we'll continue to focus our resources on upgrading that. In Tausra's skill tree, we can see that six of each competencies will grant us lavish in parades, a useful title for a chariot heavy army. For now, we've picked Overseer of Militia, and next we'll get Master Charioteer. And we could perhaps utilize Gaze of Neef along the way. We'll send Talseret down to the Buhen province, another source of both sacred Egyptian land and precious food production, plus our closest crown rival, Amen Mez. However, her absence in the homelands is felt, and while she's away building on her legitimacy for the crown, Abju decide now is a good time for an offensive. Seems they weren't too happy with our attacks on their outposts. There's a chance our second army can make their way back, and if they arrive in time, we'll have good backup. If not, we'll have to rely on the garrison force at our nearby outpost. Hmm. Our second army were not able to reach Nekin in time, so our garrison must prove themselves. Our reinforcing outpost will arrive straight away from the southeast. It should give us a nice rear attack if we can hold the outer areas. Talseret's army settles the raids Her Hetem. It'll be the first of four settlements we plan to take in Buhen. As she heads down to face Amon Mez, we've sent our second army back up north to finally take care of Abju. Then we'll take him across the river to take out our crown competitor, Waset. It'll be an aggressive few turns before the end of the Civil War. Fun fact, Wasset has a more commonly known name, Thebes.
At long last, we have proven our worth to sit as pharaoh over Egypt. But a crown isn't enough for Tazra. She wants the throne. Menefer sits in the north, just beyond our husband Seti, who we've built good relations with. To get there, we need to take out Menepta's remaining faction. Abju and Amon Mez were taken care of, but while Menepta's remaining faction is dwarfed by our power, they still pose a threat, and a second civil war could be just around the corner. Let's move my pieces around a bit. Utilizing our biggest natural asset, the River Nile, we can transverse across Egypt in a much more efficient manner. Talzra can head up north to connect with our second general in our approach on Menefer. We should also set up some new trade deals to keep our resources flowing. We can find out what resources are in more demand and set up our barter agreements accordingly. And finally this turn, we'll want to revisit the gods. We've been doing an awful lot of praying, as well as constructing shrines at our outposts. Opening the local deities panel, we can see we've reached tier 2, which enables us to devote our general to Osiris. Looking at Ra's bonuses, it would have been nice to get a charge bonus for our chariots. No, I can't be tempted. I'll stick to Osiris. Besides, through the preparation against reprisal decree, we can unlock another slot for worship. Get two gods on the go. Perhaps for now we'll devote our second general and save Talzret for Ra a little later down the line. En route, we'll stop by our chariot workshops to pick up some new wheels. The elite javelin chariots are ours to recruit. Their higher charge bonus will be very useful for flanking. We've also unlocked the upper Egyptian Kapesh warriors, who are immune to flanking. There's one remaining army of Wasat, and as we move up the river, Talzret can thank our second general for his hard work by helping to take them out, ending their story once and for all. This gives us a good chance to try our elite javelin chariots. We'll take our other chariots around to distract the enemy ranged units, while our elites tease the infantry units. I might hold the rest of my army back a little bit to play with them. <laughs> yeah, they ain't reaching me. Chariots are just perfect for skirmish mode. The sun sets over Egypt, and I've noticed that Seti is edging closer and closer to the idea of confederation. As my husband, I thought he would have suggested that a little bit sooner, but I guess he was busy. Let's give him a little ultimatum and see where his loyalties lie. Yeah, I thought as much. Before taking Menefer, we need to deal with Pepta and Anubu Hegei. We'll send our warlord Seti out first to encircle the garrison outposts, cutting them off from the main settlements, while the brain of the operation, Kalsret, swoops in to take control. Our second general will continue to defend our homelands. Menepta's remaining faction stands defiant in the capital, our last threat to the claim of the crown. Tausra has begun the attack with two siege towers and wall sapping. We've got another few turns to wait for that to complete. Once it has, our forces will have knocked a hole through their defences. I plan to utilise it for my chariots to get in faster. Let us prove our legitimacy. We've set our siege towers to arrive at two different areas of the western wall, to spread out the enemy forces. In front of them will be our spearmen in a spear wall formation, protecting themselves and the ladder units from arrows. Our wall sapping has created a gap on the southwest corner, which will send our elite chariots through. I want some infantry to head in first though to defend them from any surprises, as a chariot backed into a corner is useless. We'll utilize our Kapesh warriors as they are immune to flanking. The rest of our chariots will fly around the field to draw attention away from the ladders, and finally, our ranged units will fire upon the wall to cause some early damage. I'm going to hold Talzrak back for a little bit until Seti has arrived. By then I hope to have captured the main gate and we can send the rest of our armies through there.
Although this city burns, it will rise again under the eye of a new pharaoh. A rightful pharaoh. Egypt will no longer be led by short-sighted locusts, determined only to chase satiation. But instead, with the patience of the deserts, shaping Egypt with purpose, wisdom, and conviction.